It's on its way home, kind of. It's in France right now, but it's going back to the Med to Syria, and it wants to be there to greet the Russian carrier ship and the Iranian ships. You know, we've got a stage setting up here that's not good, and you can believe what you want. Uh, yesterday, last night, uh, Hezbollah group shot four uh, uh, Katusha rockets at, at Israel. That's the first time since 2009 that a rocket has come across the Lebanon border. Israel fired back a bunch of uh, martyr rounds and uh, shot them back. Turkey today says that they are going to do most likely uh, go in and intervene, uh, but they want they're going to have international help such as France, America. There's going to be a major military intervention into Syria any day now, any day now, and that's. Syria is not going to let that happen. Assad is cornered, the president of Syria. He knows he's going down. He knows he has nothing left. What we're trying to do is draw Iran in through Syria. We're going to bring Iran to the war and not bring the war to Iran. If we can have Iran come into Syria and disrupt what you call a humanitarian effort, we have every reason to hit Iran in America's eyes and in the Western world's eyes. What we're facing here it, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's World War III right away, but an invasion into Syria is going to kick the door wide the fuck open. People need to prepare. The story's coming out now. They're already speculating gas up because of this. Uh, oil prices are already going up because of this. And they said it's, it, they said it's going to keep going up. And they're looking at two to $500 a barrel once Iran gets involved. You're talking anywhere from six to eight to twelve dollars for a gallon of gas right here in the great United States and around the world. It, it's, people just need to hear this out. This is inevitable. There is nothing stopping this right now. Nothing. You need to prepare for this. This is not fear mongering. This is the truth. Do your research. Any mainstream media is even covering this. But what happened today to the British Embassy was a, was, a, was a big shot from Iran. This almost went back to back the 70s when they overtook the American Embassy in Tehran. This is getting dead serious now. And when you got the Russians coming in, the Russians came out today with the missile they shot across the Atlantic Ocean, saying that they will hit anybody that they choose to hit if they intervene in Syria. Russia is going to go after the new NATO missile shield that's going up. They're going to, Iran says they're going to hit Turkey, hit the missile shield there, which will disable all radars with Israel, America. This is, a, this is a major setup. This is a setup by the elite. You know, they've got the world on the edge of financial collapse. They're pulling the trigger. And like I said, this is dead serious now. And if you were smart, you would start getting your shit together. Because when, once hey, oil man. prices go up, yeah. Can, can you, uh, so the bombing at the nuclear facility, can you give a little detail on that action, like what type of facility it is and all that? All right, well, there was a bombing two weeks ago in Iran, and it, they hit a missile base. It killed the head missile commanders, a ballistic missile base. The satellite images come out of it yesterday, just devastated it, leveled it, blew buildings down, everything. Now, they were saying at first that Iran was trying to put a, a miniaturized nuclear warhead and a ballistic missile and it didn't work out right and it blew everything up. Well, then the truth come out. Israel come out, uh, CIA Mossad and said, we did it. They come right out and said, we did this. And Iran's like, oh, we were working on something that could destroy Israel and it set us back two weeks. Well. Now, yesterday we had another explosion in Ishafan, Iran, which is one of their main nuclear enrichment facilities is located there. Uh, the British put a satellite image of it out today, devastated it. it looked like a freaking nuke went off. Israel come out today and said, we did that. The Mossad did that with the MI6 and the CIA. So what did Iran do? Iran turned around and stormed the British embassy today to cover it up. And that was all you were hearing on the news was the storming of the British Embassy. Iran's getting covert, covertly picked apart right now. They're softening the target is what they're doing. Uh, Western, uh, European, they're softening the targets. They're taking out what they can right now, and then what they can't take out, they're going to take out through the air. But what you're going to see first is a war with, with... Go ahead, go ahead. 
Uh, well, my question is, uh, some people want some sources. Have you put that stuff up on your website? Yeah, I'm going to start updating my website again. I haven't updated in a couple months because it was kind of at a lull. But now the shit's happening, I'm going to start updating it because I get questions all the time. Uh, you know, I do, I have, I have a thousand uh, of different mid -east sources. I translate stuff. I do everything. I just, I don't use usually mainstream stuff from America. I go straight to the mid -east and use mid -east sources and translate it. I have a couple sources in Israel I talk to on a daily basis. Israel is stationing their Jericho missiles all around Jerusalem and the West Bank. They're moving their long-range Jericho missiles on portable uh, launchers all around Jerusalem and the West Bank. These are the ones that can carry nuclear warheads. These are the ones that can hit Iran. They are stationing them as of yesterday all around Jerusalem and the West Bank. So I, have a uh, I got a question, man. Is there is there any uh, like information on what radioactive material was released when they hit that enrichment plant, or has anybody even said, said anything about that? They haven't said that yet. Uh, Iran is denying that this happened yesterday. They're saying that it was just nothing. Whereas sources there on the ground seen the explosion. They said it, it shook everything. You could see the smoke billowing through the air. And it was right in the satellite images of their Ishafan nuclear facility plant. So Iran knows we know what it was, but they're denying it. They don't want to know. They don't want the world to know they're getting picked apart right now, covert, covertly. And you, like I said, we're hitting the stuff we can hit right now. And the other stuff we can't hit, we're going to hit through the air when the big war begins. But like I said, what we're going to do, I don't think an attack on Iran now will happen until the spring or summer, a direct attack on them. I think what we're going to try to do first here in the next couple weeks to the end of the year is draw them in through Syria. Because once, once Turkey goes into Syria, Syria is going to blow up. Uh, you're going to have, uh, Turkey's going to do a no-fly zone. France is talking about doing humanitarian corridor. Basically, it's a Libya 2.0 on steroids, which you're going to see happen in Syria. Except this time around, you're going to have Russia, you're going to have Iran, and several other groups trying to come to Syria's rescue, which is exactly what we want. And it's like I've said on my shows, this really has less to do with Syria and Iran than what it has to do with Russia. This has to do a lot with Russia. We want a war with Russia. For whatever reason, we want a war with Russia. We just broke off our, 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 greedy, our treaty we have with them where we would tell them when we were putting our troops. Uh, we told them, we're not telling you no more. We'll be station our troops in your back door if we want, and you won't know. Uh, the UK just broke off their treaty with Russia the other day, told them the same thing. We're going to move our troops wherever you want, F you, Russia. We're not telling you nothing anymore. Medvedev, the president of Russia, is pissed off about this, uh, this NATO missile shield, saying that it's after him and not Iran. So Medvedev today launched this huge missile that can take out these uh, missile shields and said, take a good look at that, Obama. Look what I got. Obama turned around today and laughed and said, is that all you got? This has to do a lot with Russia, more than what people realize. It really has nothing to do with Syria or Iran or nukes. It has to do with getting a piece of Russia. And then China, China's ready to fight us in the South China Sea right now over oil. And they've got their carrier station there right now. They're ready to go. They've got their, their naval fleet there. They're facing off against Vietnam, Thailand, the Philippines, Malaysia, and we're backing all them groups up against China over there. It's like I said, when this war breaks out, you're going to have a war theater in the Mideast. You're going to have a war theater in the Mediterranean. You're going to have a war theater in uh, Venezuela with Hugo Chavez because he has an IRGC base there. Plus, we want his oil. The elite want his oil. You're going to have a war theater in the South China Sea. You're going to have about four or five war theaters go down pretty darn fast. And, of course, North and South Korea. North Korea has been coming out and says, you know, we're not going to let Iran go down. And the first thing the North's going to do when Iran gets hit is try to launch an attack on the South. You're going to see stuff just drop fast. The shoes are going to drop. Once the first shoe drops in Syria, it's going to go fast. Hey, man, uh, give me... A, I, I didn't follow the story very much, dude. I just saw the blurb, dude. Give me, give me your opinion on why we stationed 2,000 troops in Australia. Are those advisory role positions, or what, what, what no. is that? 
their Marines, battle Marines, to face off against China. Is that enough, though, 2,000? No, it's not enough, but it's just a strategic move on our part. It's to show Australia we have their back, basically. Okay, I'm just curious, China's man. That was weird to me. China's trying to inch their way closer and closer to Australia for whatever reason, whether they want it or whatever. They're inching themselves closer and closer, and we see that, and Australia sees that, and Australia's like, hey, we helped you out in Afghanistan, we helped you out in Iraq, you know, we need some help now. So they said over the next couple of years, we're going to have about 2,500 fighting Marines there, and we're going to be sending about 200 a month there until we get about 2,500 stationed there. You know, I'd love That's to be a Marine station in Australia. That'd be some sweet duty. <laughs> <laughs> Until the war broke out. But people, you need to so, take this seriously. You know, so why are we going at Russia, Russia, though? It's just the plan. The economic, the elitist plan. New world order. You know, Russia, Russia's got their agenda, and China's got their agenda. Of course, we got our agenda with the elite, and it's just... That that's the game, you know. The World War Three is an American, you know. World War Three is an Israel and Iran or American Iran. World War Three is America, Russia, and China. Yeah, and, I can agree so with you there. And so it will be. And so it will be too. And so it will be. Everybody's broke. Everybody's teetering on the edge of collapse. I mean, look at our, our all of our banks that just got downgraded today worldwide. There was like a mass bank downgrading today. Right after the stock market closed, too. You know, look at American Airlines. Boom. See, American Airlines. We're losing everything. America is going down the fucking tubes. They're taking everything away. Everything's going bankrupt, broke, downgraded. You know, you need to look in the mirror, people, and see. We're done. It's time for war. This is the same thing that brought on World War II. If you look at World War II, a lot of things look exactly the same that got us into World War II. Yeah, I agree with you there. You know, but it's... Any it's more updates, Mr. Mr. F-Town? This is going to start with Syria. Keep your eye on Syria. Once you see Turkey or somebody going to Syria in the next few weeks or sooner, it's on. And all i got to say is stock up on gas. Please, if you listen to anything I've ever said for two years, stock up on gas. Fill your car up, keep it full at all times, get some extra tanks, fill them up, because once this war starts, oil is going through the freaking roof. <laughs> oh, man. This is fucking bad news. You know, it's the <coughs> Will it's the tough. UK get you know, attacked? Will the UK get attacked? I don't know. What you got with the UK tomorrow is you got these major strikes going in the UK tomorrow where they're putting the, the military in charge of the country tomorrow. They're putting the military in charge of the UK tomorrow. Really? Yeah, you didn't hear that story? There's major, major strikes happening tomorrow where everything's shutting down. Everything. And the, and the military's going to be pretty much running the country because everybody's going to be on strike. Teachers, police, doctors, lawyers, you name it. The whole country. What are they the be striking strike for? The Euro situation? Uh, more money. Everything. Everything. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. But it's the biggest strike they've ever had, and they said this could devastate the, the, the European economy tomorrow. Oh, very interesting. You know, there's just, people need to look around. There's too many dots connecting right now. Too many dots. You know, this is no longer talk or hearsay. It's here. And if you aren't prepared, you need to get prepared like now. Right now. Because this shoe could drop in Syria any hour, any day, right now. You know, all I can say oh. is say a prayer for peace. Say a prayer for peace, because that's the only thing that's, that's going to save us right now. All right, apparently your 15 minutes are up. <laughs> Thank you for the updates there, Mr. F-Town. Hey, no problem, man.